Non-renewable energy sources are those that exist in a fixed amount and involve energy transformation that cannot be easily replaced. When I think about fossil fuel resources, I most commonly think of coal. But there's more than one type of coal, and how each type is made depends on the heat, pressure, and depth of burial of the deposit. The process of coal formation begins with peat. Peat is composed of dead and partially decaying organic matter that usually comes from some sort of wetland. Peat can be burned for fuel, but it's not particularly energy dense, and it produces a lot of smoke, so it's a really poor source of energy. As sedimentation continues and material is piled on top of peat, the heat and pressure produces lignite. Lignite is best described as compressed peat. It's a poor source of energy, it's not very energy dense, and also creates very high emissions of CO2 and particulates when burned, but it is definitely better to burn than peat. As even more heat and pressure is applied, the lignite is converted into bituminous coal. And it's named that way because one of the substances it contains is bitumen. Uh, another name for that is asphalt, and it's the sticky substance that holds our roads together and seals our roofs. While bituminous coal is of higher quality and energy density than lignite, it's still not the ideal coal. Lignite, put under immense heat and pressure for incredibly long periods of time, like 350 million years long period of time, is converted into anthracite, which is categorized as metamorphic rock. It is the coal with the highest carbon content, the highest energy density, and burns with the fewest impurities. We've already talked about mining, which is how we get the coal, so let's just skip right ahead to how we actually use it for electricity. Coal is combusted, which produces heat. That heat then boils water, which is why coal-fired power plants are generally always near some body of water. The steam then spins a turbine, which spins a generator. A generator uses magnets, and as it spins, the alternating magnetic field induces a flow of electrons. While you don't need to know the actual physics behind it for AP Environmental, you should keep in mind two things for pretty much the rest of this unit. Most forms of electricity are just ways to produce steam to spin a turbine. And the generator that gets spun by the turbine induces a flow of electrons. By definition, electricity is, is that flow of electrons. So anything that causes electrons to move around is going to be producing electricity. Another fossil fuel we use is oil. The formation of oil begins in the ocean where dead phytoplankton and other marine organisms sink to the bottom. As these layers of phytoplankton build up along with sediments, the heat and pressure eventually converted into oil. However, because more decomposition continues, oil is commonly found alongside natural gas, which is primarily methane. The oil is removed by drilling under the surface, which can be as deep as 50,000 feet. It really is an engineering feat of how we extract oil. Oil can be heated to different temperatures, which will cause it to separate out to different components, which we can use. Gasoline and diesel, which we use to power our vehicles, or even asphalt, the, the bitumen, are all things we can get out of heating the oil to different temperatures. As the easily accessible oil is depleted as global consumption increases, oil companies must resort to lower quality sources like tar sands. Tar sands are a combination of clay, sand, water, and bitumen. That bitumen can be used to produce an oil-like substance, but it's much more difficult and more expensive to do and produces more waste. Peak oil is the theoretical maximum rate of extraction of oil. We expect to hit global peak oil by 2040, and then oil production will slow down and will become more expensive. It's estimated that oil production altogether will have to stop around the year 2200 as we've exhausted our accessible supplies. Natural gas, which can be found near oil reserves, 
can also be found somewhat isolated in shale rock too. We extract natural gas in a process called hydraulic fracturing or fracking, which injects water, sand, and a bunch of chemicals to crack the rock, which releases the gas that's trapped inside it. Natural gas can also be used for producing electricity, which works much the same way as coal. However, instead, the natural gas is burned instead. Now, natural gas burns a lot cleaner and produces fewer pollutants than coal. It, in fact, it almost completely combusts. However, the extraction and movement of natural gas has a large impact, as some methane can leak, which we know has greater impacts on global warming than carbon dioxide, and the chemicals used in fracking can contaminate soils and waters, making the area less usable for agriculture or even pollute the drinking water supplies. The distribution of fossil fuel resources is not uniform. The top regions containing oil resources include Venezuela, Canada, and the Middle East. Natural gas reserves are also unevenly distributed, with the highest concentrations being in Russia, the Middle East, and the United States. Coal is most easily found in the United States, Russia, and China. And you may notice that these are also the countries that utilize these resources the most. The distribution of these energy resources is not uniform, and neither is the use of energy resources. You may notice that China, the United States, and Russia are the largest users of energy, mostly because, well, they have the majority of the energy resources. But as developing countries become more developed, their reliance on fossil fuels for energy increases because they are a cheap source of energy. Using renewable sources of energy like wind and solar is a bit more expensive. And while it is increasing in utilization, soon to overtake even coal, as a source of energy in the future, this trend is seen mostly in developed countries, while developing countries usually resort to much cheaper fossil fuel use. This ends up concentrating a lot of the pollution that results from the burning of fossil fuels in relatively poor countries. Because fossil fuels are not renewable, once they're gone, they're, they're gone. So we really do have to consider changing to a renewable infrastructure for the future, not just because it's an environmental disaster which produces a lot of pollution and is contributing to global climate change, but also because, well, we better do it now while it's still easier to do and we have fossil fuel resources to help us transition along the way.